So obviously our feet are very important because that's where you connect with the ground and that's kind of the first thing that takes stress and then it just kind of goes up from there. So what are some things when you're deciding on say that some of the best shoes for foot arthritis. Um, so if we kind of just go into maybe what to consider when you are say looking for a shoe or fitting for a shoe, um, you know, widths and surfaces and how much cushion and all that kind of stuff. Are there some general guidelines that if someone were to walk through your door and have foot arthritis, what some things that you would consider? <music> I mean, in, in general, like the number one thing you want to consider is like kind of three things you want to consider when you buy a shoe, right? Uh, and then first and foremost, usually I find, especially if you have arthritic changes, um, you know, sometimes you need extra stability, right? So if you have a shoe, for example, like this, uh, usually you want to you want to check the heel counter, right? So if, it's, if you squeeze the heel counter, I don't know if you can see that with this, maybe it's better if I use this shoe because in front of a black shirt that might show up a little better, right? So if, you, if I use this shoe, for, for example, as an example, uh, the, uh, the heel counter here is reinforced. So as I squeeze it, you know, I can't push the two sides together. So that's going to provide a little Got more stability it. and it will prevent the foot from potentially sliding off the sole, right? So that's kind of the purpose of a stiff heel counter is to provide okay. that structure in the back of the shoe so you're not sliding around and slopping around in the footwear. I mean, obviously the Hoka here, this particular style of Bondi uh, has a very thick sole. So that provides some extra cushioning as well, which is in, in some cases that's important for somebody that has uh, knee or uh, knee OA, uh, osteoarthritis in the knee or in the ankle, uh, just to kind of take some of the stress off, right? So the cushioning can be very beneficial. Uh, but in some cases, um, what they found also with uh, arthritis is that uh, if you have a more flexible sole and not a stiffer sole, it uh, can be uh, better for the client as well, especially if they have knee problems, right? Because then they can step the way they want to and the shoe is not blocking their step too much, right? So this is a very structured mm -hmm. shoe. You can see it doesn't bend that much. You know, you don't usually want to be able to kind of bring the shoe up like a towel, right? So if, you, if I'm doing this, you know, it should be fairly structurally sound. But in some cases, you know, certain clients, they would do better with something that's a little bit more flexible. So as that shoe moves and it has more flexibility, uh, sure. especially with knee away, they might find that's more comfortable just because of the fact they can kind of vary how they step, right? Uh, I mean, this has a pretty firm sole on the bottom. So that's not always the best for that either because then you can't really vary the step as much, right? And you might okay. find that the impact is coming through. So a kind of a softer, flexible shoe may be good for somebody with uh, knee osteoarthritis just to reduce some of the strain on the, on the knee itself because now they, they're not blocked and forced to step a certain way. And they can kind of step the way they want to to relieve pain in that in that particular area, right? But um, yeah. On the other hand, let's say if you have a uh, rigid toe joint, which I'm not sure if you see that a lot. You know, the first metatarsal joint. Yes. Yeah. You know, that doesn't move toe, very well. Toe yeah. joint right here, right? That one doesn't bend anymore. So let's say that's hallux rigidus. So it's technically, you should have about 60 degrees range of motion through there. That's not even facing the right direction. So you should have about 60 degrees range of motion in here. Right. But if you don't, if you can't bend that toe joint and there's a lot of pain in that in that joint, usually will present itself on the top of your foot right here. Then uh, having a rocker sole profile like this shoe uh, will help reduce some of that pain. OK. Right. So uh, okay. you can see that Interesting. more flexible. Right. Whereas on this shoe here, you know, as I push that upwards, it doesn't bend. Uh, but it also has a nice bevel here. You see that curve in the front here? Right. So if I put that on a flat surface, it will actually, you know, roll forward. So it kind of compensates. Yeah, okay. exactly. The shoe doesn't have to flex. So your toe doesn't have to flex, which reduces pain uh, in, sure. the, um, in the joint itself. Right. So that's for kind of Holly's rigidus conditions. Okay. The other thing that's very important also is when you take the insole out of the shoe, usually when you stand on it, you know, that's one way to test the, uh, the actual length of the shoe being appropriate. You want to have about a finger with the space at the end. And reason being is you don't want to have the shoe cram your toes too much, you know, especially if you have maybe bunion conditions and other, you know, maybe turf toe condition and the toe is constantly ramming into the end of the shoe is going to cause, you know, potential pressure back at the joint here as well, right? At the big yeah. toe joint. And then uh, it's important to have some extra space there so you can actually wiggle your toes around and you can use your toes like, a, like the balancers that they're supposed to be, you know? Like if you're doing a push up, you know, with one finger, it's pretty hard, you know, but if you use five fingers, you know, you can do a much better push up because you have more, you know, surface making contact. And that's kind of how the toes should be in the shoe as well. It should be natural balances for your foot. 
and that's that's super important right um, okay do that the other thing i usually recommend also is that if you go across the ball of the foot right here mm -hmm. so you see this area right here uh that's usually you know the big toe joint which should you know kind of sit in the widest part of the shoe i mean if you look at the bottom you can see kind of the widest part of the shoe is about there right so uh, as you go across the widest part of the shoe you should you shouldn't be able to pinch the material necessarily with your fingers right so if i can, if I can pinch it usually that means too it's big. too much speed okay uh, but if you have a little bit of give it's okay right but if it's, if it's like super snug and there's no movement at all it'll probably put a lot of pressure on your toes and potentially you know cause issues and irritations right so that's okay you know, one thing to consider there as well yeah sure